Eh, muy buenos días, buenas tardes y buenas good noches. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, distinguished guests, partners, and peatland enthusiasts. My name is Sir Babel, Sir Babel Cancino, and it is a pleasure to welcome you from all over the world to this important fourth meeting of the partners of the Global Peatlands Initiative. A gathering to recognize peatlands as a great nature-based solution that can help countries address the triple threat of nature, climate, and pollution crisis. Today, we are joined by four peatland-rich tropical countries that are partners in the Global Peatlands Initiative, an effort to save peatlands as the largest terrestrial organic carbon stock and to prevent it from being emitted into the atmosphere. Welcome Peru, Republic of Congo, Congo, Indonesia and the Democratic Republic of Congo. This event represents a remarkable moment for South-South collaboration towards the conservation, restoration, and sustainable management of tropical peatlands. The Global Peatlands Initiative, led by the UN Environment Program, is a collaborative effort made up of 43 partners. The GPI seeks to develop and adopt new approaches for the conservation, restoration, and sustainable management of peatlands, linking science to practice and policy making. Last year, the fourth meeting of the GPI partners had to be postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And, and although this year an alternative virtual meeting had to be organized, we are pleased to have brought all of you together. This high-level ministerial exchange represents an important opportunity for South-South and triangular collaboration, helping to strengthen knowledge and experience sharing and the collection of innovation's best practice. Today, we are pleased to be invited to discuss the importance of peatlands by our honorable host, His Excellency Gabriel Quijandria, Minister of the Environment of Peru, a recognized expert in environmental and natural resource management issues with extensive experience in different institutions promoting development in the Latin American region. In addition, he has extensive experience in environmental policy and management issues, sustainable development financing, biodiversity conservation, and climate change. In the field of research of his competence, he has developed studies oriented to policy design and training and teaching activities, both at the university level and for decision makers in the public and private sectors. He holds a master's degree in natural resources management from Incai Business School in Costa Rica and a bachelor's degree in sociology from the University of the Republic in Uruguay. He has held positions as co-chair of the Green Climate Fund representative in Peru of the Nature Conservancy and head of the Technical Department of Profonampe. He has held the position of Vice Minister of Strategic Development of Natural Resources at the Ministry of the Environment of Peru on two occasions between December 2011 and 2016, and again between March 2019 and November 2020. He is currently the Minister of the Environment of Peru, and once again, I welcome everyone. It is my honor to hand over to His Excellency Gabriel Quijandria, Minister of the Environment of Peru, for his opening remarks. Go ahead, Mr. Quijandria. Thank you very much, Sir Babel. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I would like to greet Mr. C Ms. Sidney. City Urbay, uh, especially the minister, minister of uh, Indonesia, the Vice Minister of the Sustainable, the Minister of Sustainable Development of the Republic of Congo, Mrs. Arlette Sudan, Minister of the Environment and Develop Sustainable Development of the Republic of Congo, the representatives from the United Nations. Uh, for the environment and for um, for and welcome the representatives from C4 as well as all our guests. To me, it's an honor on behalf of the Peruvian government to welcome you all to this high level dialogue in the framework of the fourth meeting of 
the members of the Global Pitlands Initiative. As Sir Babel mentioned, we are doing these virtually because of the pandemic. It's a shame that this wasn't it was impossible to organize these in Madrid, as we as we um, discussed this with uh, Mariana. We had the, the possibility to do it in Iquitos. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do so, but I believe that we will be able to do so uh, some other time uh, face to face. As I mentioned, uh, for Peru, it's an honor to host these high level uh, discussion recognizing the importance of these type of ecosystems. One of the benefits that it creates in terms of several uh, items from the environmental agenda in the Peruvian case, we are a country in which we have a very important extension of peatlands, which surround the more than 50,000 meters square approximately. And these peatlands represent or have a good representation in terms of the amount of carbon stocks that is in the biomass throughout the country. We calculate this represents around 50% of all the carbon that we have stored in the biomass of the country, which gives us an idea of the importance of their con of its conservation, its uh, sustainable management, and its recovery as well as strategies to deploy the capacity of this type of ecosystems to generate benefits for local populations, but also for the global community. Peatlands also are also important in terms of culture. In the Peruvian case, it's they are linked. For example, in the case of our peatlands, they, or or wetlands that have peat in our uh, highlands, have a lot of tradition in terms of water management and the creation of a life linked to uh, livestock. For example, in this type of wetlands which are called bofedales. In the case of our tectonic peatlands, they are relevant. I was saying that our Amazon peatlands are very relevant because they provide water resources and they also allow the existence of fishing resources, for example, which are very, very important in terms of the livelihood of these communities. In that sense, we have made some a, a series of measures that I'm going to mention in my next presentation. And just to finish up, first of all, I would like to apologize for the informal look I have, I'm not as elegant as Sir Babla is because I'm about to uh, take a flight, to take a plane, and that's why I am dressed uh, as I am. But once again, I would like to thank the opportunity that was given to Peru to host these uh, discussions. I would like to clearly express our availability the availability of our country and the Ministry of the Environment, who is representing Peru in this event. So we can learn from this uh, discussion and to advance in terms of our involvement in the Global Peatlands Initiative and our intention to be part of the Peatland Global Center in order to take advantage of all the progress that is being made in, in terms of knowledge and the possibility to implement specific measures in these relevant ecosystems that are being discussed uh, around the world. Thank you very much.
and welcome everyone. Thank you very much for your clarifying uh, comments. It's an honor to learn that Peru is committed to sustainable development uh, and management of its tropical peatlands. Now, I would like to invite our moderator to express the important role of peatlands as, as a nature-based solution. Welcome, Doreen Robinson. Doreen is an ecologist from conservation with more than 25 years of experience before she was the chief the head of the biodiversity on, sorry. During Robinson, head of the biodiversity and land branch in the ecosystems division at the UN Environment Program, Doreen is a conservation ecologist by training with over 25 years of experience. Previously, she was the chief for the wildlife unit at UNEP. Prior to that, she served as the regional chief for environment with the United States Agency for International Development in South Africa, leading programs on transboundary ecosystem management, combating wildlife crime, water supply and sanitation, and water resource management in 14 countries. Doreen also worked for the United States Agency for International Development in Madagascar, directing programs in biodiversity, ag agriculture, rural development, Development and disaster management. In Washington, D.C., she led policy and program development for global biodiversity conservation, promoting collaborative solutions, good governance, and participatory approaches to protected area conservation, natural resource management, and benefit sharing with local communities. She has also worked for the World Wildlife Fund and other environmental organizations spanning a range of local locations, including the Amazon Atlantic Greenforest of South America, the Alps in Europe, the Coral Triangle in Asia, and the Congo Basin. Doreen, the floor is yours. Thank you, Zora Babel, for your kind introduction. And I would really like to appreciate His Excellency for welcoming us here today and for your dedication and contributions to the Global Peatlands Initiative. UNEP is honored to be able to co-host this important ministerial dialogue together with you. We deeply appreciate your leadership and the spirit of collaboration of your excellent team and the contributions of our distinguished GPI country partners and their capable team. And lastly, the week appreciate the co collaboration of the International Peatland Center team and of course, the kind support of C4. As the minister has rightly said, peatlands have huge importance and, the, and they have a strong potential as a nature-based solution for solving sustainable development challenges. Intact peatlands are critical in addressing climate change and biodiversity issues. Nature-based solutions are by definition, actions to protect, sustainably manage and restore natural or modified ecosystems that address societal challenges effectively and adaptively while simultaneously providing human well-being and biodiversity benefits. The goal of these solutions is to support the achievement of society's development goals and safeguard human well being in ways that reflect cultural and societal values, and also to enhance the resilience of ecosystems, their capacity for renewal, and the provision of services. Nature based solutions are designed to address major societal challenges such as food security, climate change, water security, human health, disaster risk and social and economic development more generally. We know that peatlands are found all over the world in close to 170 countries. They cover less than 3% of the planet's land surface, but store approximately 30%, a third of all land-based carbon, twice the amount in all of the world's forests combined. The amount of carbon stored with within one hectare of a healthy peatland is equivalent to an annual emission of 1,400 passenger cars. Peatlands offer a triple win for climate, nature, and people. They're the most carbon dense terrestrial ecosystem on the earth. They host an exceptional range of unique biodiversity and have supported human health and well being for thousands of years. Peatlands are a great nature based solution, not only because they store massive amounts of carbon but also because peatlands play a critical role in delivering a host of other ecosystem services, 
that provide well-being and benefits, such as hydrological cycling, hosting biodiversity, including important pollinators, and preventing flooding, land loss, and subsistence. Peatlands occur in, in most biomes, often storing ancient carbon, accumulated and stored over millennia, considered irrecoverable carbon because if it is degraded or disturbed, it cannot be replaced or recovered within our lifetime. UNEP recently published the State of Finance for Nature report, which, is assesses, which assesses how much public and private investment is being directed toward nature-based solutions and provides insights into the extent to which governments, businesses, and financiers are walking the talk of green development. The findings are clear. We are not investing nearly enough in nature. Investments in nature-based solutions will have to triple by 2030 and increase fourfold by 2050 if we are to have a chance at solving the planetary emergency, the triple crisis of climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution. One recommendation, uh, one recommendation asks to galvanize political and business momentum to protect and restore our Earth, stressing that any strategy that aims to repair our relationship with nature and to harness the potential of nature-based solutions would need to strongly feature protection and conservation measures for high carbon value ecosystems like peatlands, mangroves, and primary forests as a central pillar. I'm excited to hear how you, as the Global Peatlands Initiative partner countries of Indonesia, Democratic Republic of Congo, Republic of Congo, and of course, Peru, with your immense tropical peatlands are doing just that. Back to you, Zerobapa. Zero bubble. Oh. Doreen, you have finished? Yes. Yes. Doreen. Back to you to introduce the other panelists. Sorry, I, I had a problem with Zoom. Okay. Um, muy bien. Muchas gracias. Uh, muchas Thank gracias. You very much. Doreen for sharing the context and importance of peatlands and the important role that these uh, have in leading the Global Peatlands Initiative. Today, we're also honored to be joined by three more leaders who are forging a pathway for the conservation, restoration, and sustainable management of peatlands of the tropics. Your Excellencies, welcome. It is my honor to introduce these distinguished leaders. Please join me in welcoming Her Excellency, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of the Environment and Sustainable Development of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Eve Basaiba Masudi, lawyer by training, Secretary General of the Congolese Liberation Movement for several years, national deputy for several legislatures, including the current one, member of the International Union of Lawyers, and international consultant in human rights, negotiation, and peaceful conflict resolution, president of the Congolese Women's League for Elections. Yves Pasaiva Masudi is currently deputy prime minister Minister of the Environment and Sustainable Development uh, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Welcome, Your Excellency. I also have the privilege to introduce Her Excellency Arlette Sudan Nono, Minister of Environment, Sustainable Development and the Congo Basin from the Republic of Congo. Prior to her appointment in this new role in May this year, she was the Minister of Tourism and Environment from 2016. Her Excellency Sudan Nonol, a journalist by training, grew up and studied in Moscow and Paris and worked as an anchor, producer, and columnist before joining the Republic of Congo's presidency as a press attache. After working as a consultant in private communication in 2005, she founded the St. Francis of Assis Institute, a boarding school on the outskirts of Brazzaville. A member of the political bureau of the Congolese Labour Party, Her Excellency was made Knight of the Order of Congolese Merit in 2010. Welcome, Your Excellency. Finally, we are joined by Her Excellency, 
Siti Nurbaya, Minister of the Environment and Forestry of Indonesia. Her Excellency Nurbaya obtained her PhD in environmental science in 1998 from a joint program between Bogor Agricultural University and Sigin University, Germany. She began her career as a government officer at Lampung Provincial Government in 1981, and a few years later was appointed as a deputy head of Provincial Development Planning Agency. In 1998, she was transferred to Jakarta, assigned as the director of Planning Bureau in the Ministry of Home Affairs. And in 2001, she was promoted as a secretary general of the ministry. Her career then continued as secretary general of the Regional Representative Council of the Republic of Indonesia for the period 2006-2013. She was also the first secretary general of the council. In October 2014, President Jokowi appointed her to join the government cabinet to serve as a minister for environment and forestry, a consolidated portfolio from the two previously Ministry of Forestry and Ministry of Environment, housing more than 16,000 national civil servants. For the second period of the Jokowi presidency, she was again entrusted to serve as a minister for environment and forestry in October 2019. The ministry also serves as a focal point for climate change, biodiversity, and other environmental issues. Siti Nurbaya has been active in domestic and international fora that make her frequently invited to address a wide spectrum of subjects such as environmental and natural resource management, decentralization, bureaucracy, politics, democracy, parliament, political economy, women empowerment, geoscience, and geographic information system systems. Welcome, Your Excellency. Doreen, with pleasure, the floor is yours once again. Go ahead, please. Thank you. It's a real honor to moderate this outstanding panel. Um, so let's get started. Um, first, I'd like to start with Peru, of course. Um, Minister Kihandria, I'd like to invite you to give us an intervention on how peatlands um, as an important nature-based solution are able to advance multiple multilateral environmental agreement objectives and our real opportunity to raise a country's nature and climate ambition. Minister? Muchas gracias, Doreen. Y, y ciertamente, este, las, las Thank you, Doreen. Este tipo de ecosistemas tienen esta, esta característica por, por, o sea, por, por el hecho de que son tan importantes en el tema de fijación de carbono, por el hecho de que son tan importantes. These are very important initiatives in, because we're talking about carbon stock and have a lot of benefits that they create for different uh, policies and other ecosystem uh, services and, other, uh, and also the livelihoods of human beings. It's in the middle of different agendas that at a global level are usually handled separately. We have uh, different agendas, climate change and uh, the uh, economy, but uh, this is an ecosystem that allow us to actually realize that this logic that is behind what we're talking about today um, nature-based solution needs to be seen uh, in a holistic approach that connects different attributes um, of the environment and also connect uh, with different development goals and creation of human well-being. The role of these ecosystems uh, is important for uh, the benefits for uh, nature contributions as well in, from Peru. We have uh, recognized this with a recent regulation. I was reading a question from a colleague uh, from Argentina in the chat that uh, peatlands are not that well known. And why is that? I believe that this is related maybe to this um, pessimistic view about wetlands. We talk about swamps. We usually talk about swamps. 
and we have a negative uh, view, but once we study them, then we realize the benefits that we have from these ecosystems. The regulation that we have recently approved, we have recognized peatlands for the first time in Peruvian legislation with uh, uh, its own name. And it's, uh, um, it's very important because we have recognized the importance to map these peatlands because we know that in Peru we have more than the, uh, we have a lot of hectares that I mentioned at the beginning, but we are not that clear on where they are located. Just to end, we are making some efforts to recover peatlands that have been uh, degraded. We have a project that started with different, uh, uh, mechanisms of pay uh, per ecosystem uh, services with uh, a water supplier for the city of Lima, where we recover Andean peatlands that have been uh, degraded because they were using peat as a substrate for the production of orchids. And we are recovering recovering them so that we have provide better quality water. This replace the infrastructure. This does not uh, replace the structure that we had, but we are combining different efforts that can um, improve the life uh, and the channel of uh, what we have today. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Minister, for that. And thank you for your non-pessimistic view of peatlands um, and the commitments and leadership from Peru. Uh, you know, uh, in UNET, our UNET report published in 2019 warned that unless greenhouse gas emissions fall by 7.6% each year between 2020 and 2030, the world will miss the opportunity to get on track towards the 1.5 degrees temperature goal of the Paris Agreement. And crucially, all nations must substantially increase ambition in their nationally determined commitment. So it's fantastic to see Peru leading the way um, and working so hard to raise your ambition with the inclusion of peatlands in your NDC, but also the important recovery work that you're investing in for the future. So we're going to turn next to Indonesia. And I would very much like to welcome uh, the Minister Situ Nurbaya. A Minister of Environment and Forestry in Indonesia to share with us how peatlands are advancing in your own country, multiple ambitions and goals under multilateral environment agreements, but also how they have enabled Indonesia to raise your own country's ambition for achieving sustainable development. Minister? Thank you, Doreen. Thank you. Excellency Minister of Environment and Republic of Peru, Excellencies, the Minister from Democratic Republic of Congo and Excellency Minister of Sustainable Development, my friend Arlet uh, Sodan Donald. Uh, good evening, uh, Diana, Global uh, Pitland Coordinators, uh, Honorable Speakers and Moderator, Distinguished speaker, uh, Participants. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. First of all, I'd like to extend my gratitude and appreciation for the hard work and dedication provided by the Ministry of the Environment of Peru and the United Nations Environment in hosting this online high-level peatland event. It is my great honor to have this opportunity to address this very important event with the theme of peatlands, a super nature based solution and to share Indonesia's uh, best practices, lessons learned and experiences in managing tropical peatland achieve our national development while contributing to the advancement of the multilateral environmental agreement. Excellencies, distinguished participant Indonesian peatland are the fourth largest in the world comprising about 36% of the world's tropical peatland. 
they hold a large pool of carbon storing about 30 to 40 percent of global soil carbon deposits, making them one of the world's largest carbon storage and contributing to global climate change mitigation and adaptation. Working on peatland is an uneasy task. It requires many aspects, technical, economy, and social justice. Strong efforts to restore peatland done by many line ministries, including our Peatland Restoration Agency since 2016. We continue to seek effective ways to prevent peatland from burning, either through rewetting revegetation and revitalization of livelihood. Actually, restoration efforts only are not enough. When peatlands are neglected and no one manages them, they remain vulnerable to fire during the dry season. During a very long dry season, these abandoned peatlands remain dry, even after wetting activities have been carried out. They are also prone to fire because human access to the location is not controlled due to the absence of the land managers. For such an area, integrated policies and steps are taken. The government is continuously pursuing the best way to manage peatland on many aspects, including institutional, technical know-how, community basis, scientific approach, and paying attention to sustainable water management and relying on local community resources and local community wisdoms. Through the sustainable use of peatland, in accordance with their debt, proper water management, and the utilization of local resources and local wisdom, it is expected that peatland will be maintained, be prevented from burning, and be able to support the national development. Excellencies and distinguished participants, Indonesia has strong commitment to the protection and sustainable management of peatland ecosystem to protect and sustainably manage the peatland ecosystem. A national peatland problem emerged in 1996. This is a starting point of our long story in managing peatland from one administrative government to another since President Suharto era to our time now. Our experiences show that First, peatland can be managed well to some extent for people prosperity, but at some part of peatland landscape must be protected. The peat dome must be absolutely protected. The third one, the degraded peatland can be recovered by making them wet and controlling the hydrological techniques supported by technical know-how such as the use of LIDAR, the use of the Darcy method on peatland water balance, controlling forest fire, maintaining water management at farm level, etc. And the last one, community participation and engagement is essential and need to be supported by public awareness and law enforcement efforts. We do implement integrated policies and regulations under collaborative work of line ministries related to the peatland. The combined tasks cover spatial planning, construction, operation, and maintenance, water management at farm level, agricultural practices, paralegal, environmental protection purposes, etc. We started with the hydrological peatland unit approach and classifying the peatland function into conservation and cultivation functions. His Excellency President Joko Widodo established a specific unit called Peatland Restoration Agency in 2016. Simultaneously to those, we work hard, including in law enforcement. We also work very hard conducting patrols and wire suppression operation in the particular provinces. In order to preserve peatlands wetness throughout the year, the government regulation obliges peatland managers to maintain 0 0.4 meters of water table height, 
hydrological measure that have been implemented to fulfill his obligation are including the construction of appropriate canal networks, canal blockings, water ponds, artesian wells, as well as conducting weather modification through cloud seeding so that local rainfall pattern may be arranged to drop on pitland. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we confirm for practicing the prevention agenda as directed by President Jokowi since 2017, and we do practice for forest fire prevention until the permanent implementation comprising steps on hotspots monitoring, weather modification and cloud seeding, patrols, public awareness rising, community livelihood improvement, paralegal and law enforcement. It is confirmed that currently about 280 concession holders in 224 pitland hydrological unit are implementing the government regulation requirement with impact on pitland restoration area at about 3.47 million hectares. The restoration activities are supported by the development of rewetting infrastructures, including development of 10,690 units of water table compliance point, 1,121 data loggers for real-time water table monitoring, 792 units of rainfall monitoring station, and the construction of 27 889 canal blocking units with or without spilling. Excellencies and distinguished participants, we have many communities actually living within and surrounding peatlands, and they may be exposed to fire risk. At the same time, they can also benefit from the peatland. Hence, in implementing peatland protection management in community areas, government has developed community-based peatland management program to empower community to actively participate and improve community livelihood in line with the implementation of sustainable peatland management. There is actually an urgency to do rewetting for peatland to prevent virus and improve livelihood security. The challenge is how to do rewet areas of peatland as quickly as possible. We cannot flood or drain pit land and abandon them. We may only be able to solve the drainage problem while maintaining production, such as through paludiculture, a wet agriculture system, and through agroforestry. The purpose of demonstration farm and paludiculture demonstration activities are to teach local people how to use pit land without burning if the pit land is allowed to be utilized. The local community will protect it from land wires. In an effort to further assisting the communities in implementing restoration and sustainable pit land management in their area, ministries and agencies work together with universities and local government and engage with hundreds of facilitators. This collaboration effort is crucial since speed land utilization requires close supervision and intensive assistance, considering that even though damaged speed land may still be restored, however, deep speed land must always be maintained and protected. Excellencies and distinguished participants, as, mid of, uh, as of mid-2020, we improve community fire awareness group. It is strengthening communities through the program of legal awareness known as Paralegal. This program aims to strengthen law enforcement at community level and empower communities of their areas from a possibly fire spot as well as illegal logging. The program begins by providing training related to forest and land wire control, laws and regulation pertaining to the use of fire and the potential of diversification and economic enterprises, a 
according to the particular resources of each village. Group are then empowered to perform integrated patrol which ground checks hotspots, collect data on peak water level, and perform early suppression of forest and land fire. Another example of our success story in pit restoration by using LiDAR technology for pit dome identification as well as a sophisticated method to improve, to improve pit water balance. We have succeeded in restoring 40,000 hectares of peatland that have been damaged hard since 1996, which caused massive fires in 1997 and 2015. It is confirming that technology is one of the important support in dealing with peatland. Excellencies and distinguished participants, Indonesia puts peatlands management as part of the national strategies for years, including in our NDC, the nationally determined contribution. In our first NDC forestry sector, including peatland is expected to be the backbone of our efforts in achieving our greenhouse gases emissions reduction target by 41% in 2030 compared to the business as usual scenario. Through Red Plus program, forest fire prevention and control, as well as peatland and mangrove management, the forestry sector is projected to be the largest contributor of the national emission reduction target. We are now in the preparation for achieving carbon neutral with the initial figures of 2060 carbon neutral or sooner are under the conditional mitigation scenario and intensive adaptation, as well as we are preparing for the carbon neutral by 2030 in forestry sector. Since we have long experiences articulating combined policies on forestry and environment, such as forest land management, landscape fire control, deforestation control, moratorium, and eventually come to permanent prohibition of new permits in peatland and primary forest areas for 66 million hectares. Paludi culture practices, community engagement, and of course, law enforcement. We consider our carbon neutral target is realistic as we can learn from the 2019 condition that total emission from volume was 925 million ton CO2 equivalent and from energy was 942 million ton equivalent. Emission from pit fire was recorded for 156 million tons, but Figure in 2020 showed that the recorded emission from pit fire was only 31 million ton CA2 equivalent compared to uh, 400 in a year before. That is was verified through forest reverence emission level. Despite the annual rainfall and weather condition in 2020, we established preventing efforts by First, improving the hotspots monitoring system, controlling the peatland management through, of course, hydrological method, conducting cloud seeding patrols and developing paralegal for community awareness and law enforcement to the concessions. Indonesia's success in reducing emission has gained approval for a funding proposal from the Green Climate Fund which outline the result of Indonesia's threat plus performance for the 24-26 period with a reduction of around 20.3 million tons of CO2 equivalent, which is equal to more than 103 US dollar. Further, the success of Indonesia in reducing emission for its threat plus performance by around 17 million tons of CO2 equivalent in 26-2017 2016-2017 has also been approved by Norway through result-based payment mechanism. 
This achievement will raise public confidence about the seriousness of our government in implementing its commitment to protecting forests. Excellencies and distinguished participants, in recognizing the importance of peatland at global, regional, and national in addressing climate change, protecting biodiversity, environment, and contributing to the social economic welfare of people with a strong support from UN Environment, Government of Indonesia, together with the Government of the Republic of Congo, and Republic of Congo have established the International Tropical Peatland Center, IPTC, declared in Jakarta on 30 October 2018. The center is built on the principle of true cross-sector collaboration and integration, South-South collaboration, in building a resilient and holistic platform for science, policy, and practice, and attracting the best mind working on research and practice in this field. The, uh, the establishment of IPPC was the next step after the historic 2018 Brazzaville Declaration, signed on March 22, 2018, by the three governments to promote better management and conservation of the world's largest tropical peatland, the covered central region in the Congo Basin, and to undertake other peatland initiatives. I do thank you very much for the cornerstone on peatland platform in the world. I also do thank you to UN Environment for supporting the IPPC in continuing efforts on peatland management worldwide. Thus, I'm delighted the Republic of Peru is now officially part of our IPPC family and hope that Peru's contribution will strengthen IPPC activities to achieve our shared goals in making world tropical peatland sustainable. Excellencies and distinguished participants, during the United Nations Environment Assembly, UNEA, at its fourth session in Nairobi 2019, Indonesia and supported by other member states and relevant stakeholders has successfully convinced the Assembly to agree to a resolution on peatland entitled Conservation and Sustainable Management of Peatland. This resolution also shows Indonesia's commitment to collaborate with UN environment member states and other stakeholders to provide greater emphasis to the conservation, sustainable management and restoration of peatland worldwide in support of the sustainable practice of the peatland management. The Global Peatland Initiative through the ITPC may play a significant role in following up resolution through capacity building as well as through identifying synergies and related collaborative actions in managing peatland ecosystem in a sustainable manner and safeguarding peatland ecosystem services that evolve from the interest of relevant international organizations, member states, and other stakeholders. All in all, I want to emphasize that peatland can still provide promising resources if we utilize it with environmentally sound approach. I thank you for your kind attention and wish this event will be able to strengthen our collaboration even in this difficult situation due to the pandemic. Once again, I thank you. Thank you so much, Minister, for highlighting uh, Indonesia's ambitious and uh, complex program and commitments for conserving and restoring peatlands, but also for your commitment to partnership and collaboration. It's well appreciated. Um, I'd also like to thank you for highlighting how hard and complex and challenging it can be to protect peatlands. I don't think we can underestimate that, but hi, the points you made about including um, community and inclusive approach, the approach for appreciating indigenous knowledge and what it can contribute to conservation of peatlands, um, but also the real importance of science and evidence-based pros, both to drive the technical work, but also to inform appropriate policy and regulation around peatlands. 
um, and really the need to take a holistic land management approach that looks at water, fire management, forest management, and the whole complexity of ecosystem services, as well as the social services and the social and cultural aspects that are involved if we're truly going to have the kind of successful programs we want. So thank you so much for that. I think next we will turn to the Democratic Republic of Congo, which has been working very hard to, on a development of a national strategy for the conservation and valuation of peatlands. Um, I believe we're having some problems with connectivity of the minister, but we have the counselor in charge of peatlands and forests who will tell us more about that program, if I understand the change correctly. So the floor is over to you. Merci, merci beaucoup. Uh, bonjour à tout le monde. Pour commencer, je vais m'excuser au nom de Madame la vice Premier ministre en charge de l'environnement, Madame Bazaï Baev, qui malheureusement se trouve en Conseil des ministres. First, I would like to apologize from the. Uh, I would like to send my the apologies by the minister because she has uh, is not able to participate today. I am honored to be here with you today. I would like to uh, greet and welcome every one of you, ministers of the environment from the Republic of Peru and Indonesia. Director of the UNEP, ministers and everyone. First, I would like to thank you Uh, everyone and the government of Peru for having us here today and also uh, ITBC. We are having webinars in the Democratic Republic of the Congo to uh, recover peatlands in the fight against climate change so that we can uh, value uh, peatlands as a nature-based solution. We believe that the best way to react on this topic would be to show that countries are working on a solution solutions uh, that are based on nature and peatlands are important for this. I'm going to talk about the different challenges uh, at an economic level. First of all, in order to promote nature-based solutions and as a response to the uh, framework, regulation framework from the United Nations. There are different countries that have been working with nature-based solutions, implementing um, different international agreements. And this is what, uh, what we were doing in our country. We have, uh, um, we are using 13% for natural reserves, natural parks. This, of course, is an important uh, progress to protect these areas. There is a project uh, of one billion trees that is a project from the uh, president, the presidency itself, and is uh, a nature-based solution centered around uh, diminishing uh, greenhouse gases. In our country, we are trying to protect the peatlands and we are uh, protecting our forest, our 15 million hectares. I'm giving you this example 
because when we are seeing the participation of our countries in the fight against climate change, we are noticing that the nature-based solutions are already being considered uh, by our countries. And this is part of a super nature based solution. There are different countries that are uh, working on conservation, for example, Peru, the Republic of uh, the Congo, Indonesia are an example uh, of uh, what can happen. We can get uh, ecosystem services for human well being because of their uh, carbon stock uh, capacity. Peatlands are important for uh, our uh, ambitions as members a part of one family family that is the global peatlands initiatives that's why we need to include peatlands in our policies regarding uh, mitigations our my my country is working on a regulation that includes peatlands specifically we have some preliminary uh, results the definition and, and from that we have that the definition for peatlands is going to include, it's going to be included in a legal framework to identify peatlands so that we can uh, launch uh, preliminary stages to define, to first define peatlands themselves. This national framework defining peatlands as a nature-based solution are a challenge. We need to develop uh, our knowledge about uh, peatlands. We need to map them so that we can assess the real carbon stock in the whole peat. They are all peat is uh, uh, very particular in uh, the Re Democratic Republic of uh, the Congo. The access is very difficult. Uh, there are uh, area of production and uh, livelihood for indigenous peoples and local communities. This, uh, of course, uh, it tells us that we need to redefine the value of peatlands if the governments want to keep peatlands, peatlands as a super nature-based solutions. We need to know their value. We need to know their uh, natural value, but also their economic value. That's why the economic agreement regarding peatlands is very important, and we shall not uh, sacrifice uh, peatlands. They need to be assessed and revaluated uh, in an economic approach. In this revalorization, is to include uh, economic challenges in order to renew livelihoods of local communities and indigenous peoples. Conservation needs to be aligned with this approach, of course, because they need to be aligned with uh, natural resources need to be aligned with the economy as well. These are the challenges that we are concerned about, and we hope that we have uh, answer the question representing and representing the uh, prime minister here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, as you rightly said, knowing where peatlands are and how they are and how they are changing is key to taking action with local communities and stakeholders. 
towards the conservation and sustainable development and sustainable management of those peatlands. So the importance of valuation and what you are doing is can't be understated. We appreciate the work that the country is doing, including to improve the mapping of those peatlands in the Cuvette Central and also estimating the carbon stock. This knowledge will help not only your country, but the global community to establish the state of peatlands through an upcoming global peatlands assessment, which we, uh, UNEP is putting together with other partners. It shows why it is so crucial to continue the research, but also to connect and collaborate between all sectors and all disciplines. Not only do we need this intersectoral, interdisciplinary collaboration, but we need countries that are facing similar challenges, have similar biomes and common threats to connect and share their knowledge and experience with each other. And that's exactly what you've been doing um, with, your, with the other peatland countries. So thank you for sharing that experience. I do believe that we have a bit of a delay with the minister from the Republic of Congo. So um, I have the pleasure to introduce actually our partner from the International Tropical Peatland Center, Dr. Egis. Uh, sorry, August Justianto. And oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to speak slower for the translators. Um, do, the doctor has dedicated his working experience as a professional and government employee of the Ministry of Forestry of the Republic of Indonesia since 1986. Currently, he is the Director General of Sustainable Forest Management and also Acting Director General of Environment and Forestry Standardization and Instruments Agency since July 2021. Following an appointment as Director General of Research Development and Innovation Agency. He's been the Senior Advisor to the Ministry for Natural Resources Economic with the, Minist with the Ministry of Environment and Forestry. Dr. Justianto completed his undergraduate studies in forestry at Bogor Agricultural University in 1986 returning to earn a PhD in agricultural economics in 2005. In between, he earned a master's of natural resources at the University of New England in Australia in 1992. He's actively involved at various, in various fora on environmental and forestry issues, including international negotiations and meetings, and currently holds a position as secret, secretary of the advisory committee on climate change in Indonesia. He was chairman of Indonesian National Forestry Council 2011 to 2016. In addition to past membership on various forestry working groups, he was the Indonesian focal point for the forest investment program and member of the steering committee of the International Resource Panel, UN Environment, as well as chairman of two ASEAN mechanisms for senior officials, forestry and the environment. So the floor is yours, thank you. Thank you very much, Excellency Minister of Environment and Forestry, Republic of Indonesia, Dr. Siti Nurbaya, Excellency Minister of Environment, Peru, Dr. Gabriel Guyandra, Excellency Vice Prime Minister or Minister of Environment and Sustainable Development, Democratic Republic of Congo, or her representative, UN Environment Representative, Honorable speakers and moderators and distinguished participants. Very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you. First of all, I would like to extend my gratitude uh, and appreciation to the Ministry of Environment of Peru and the United Nations Environment Program in hosting this online high-level pitland event. It is my great honor to have this opportunity to serve the International Tropical Pitland Center the objective and progress. Excellencies, distinguished participants. The establishment of ITPC was initiated during the third Global Pitland Initiative meeting in Brazzaville on 23rd March 2018, where the three governments of the Republic of Indonesia, the Republic of Congo, and the Democratic Republic of Congo signed the Brazzaville Declaration to protect peatlands in the tropics, including the Congo Basin, to build the ITPC and to improve the capacity of global uh, peatland initiative partners and countries on peatland management. 
The next step was the IPPC declaration in Jakarta on October 2018 and continued with the several events conducted to strengthen the IPPC establishment, including a level panel of the Global Landscapes Forum to announce this new initiative and commitment, establishment of the interim secretariat and recognition of the IPPC at the UNEFA UNIA for Resolution on Conservation and Sustainable Management of Peatlands. ITPC was launched in Jakarta on 30 October 2018, where the government of Indonesia with the Democratic Republic of Congo, Republic of Congo announced a collaboration to form the ITPC. A joint declaration by three participating governments acknowledging the important role of peatlands at global, regional, and re national levels in addressing climate change, protecting biodiversity and the environment, and contributing to the social economic welfare of people. Recognizing the need to increase respective capacity through collaboration to promote best practices for conservation and sustainable management of peatlands committing to common interest in tropical peatlands and ongoing efforts by governments and partners to conserve and manage them in a sustainable manner, committing to strengthening networking and collaboration. The main objective of ITPC is to ensure that policymakers, practitioners, and communities can access sound, credible, and legitimate information analysis and all other tools needed to design and implement conservation and sustainable management of tropical peatlands. Recognizing the importance of short sort exchange, the ITPC will serve as a go-to space for short sort cooperation, which will support the dissemination of strategies and practices for tropical peatland management through coordinating and supporting collaborative international relationships and connecting different stakeholders to conduct and disseminate scientific research on tropical peatland management for sustainable development, become a center of excellence for tropical peatland research to support policy development and to provide capacity building and technical services. As a follow-up of the ITPC establishment, the Government of Indonesia established ITPC Interim Secretariat, coordinated by the Ministry of Environment and Forestry and assisted by the Center for International Forestry Research, or CIFOR. The Secretariat is based on Indonesia, located at CIFOR campus and Forda campus. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, since its declaration on in October 2018, ITPC has done a lot of works, such as hosting and participating in many international forums, taking part in global initiative, collaboration with regional and private partners, knowledge exchange and scientific cooperation, as well as promotion through website and social media. Since it, its launch, ITPC hosted and, and participated in many international forums in its effort to promote conservation and sustainable management of tropical peatlands. This includes collaboration with C4 to host plenary discussion at the Global Landscape Forums in 2019 and 2020, exploring the synergy among broader partners and countries for more effective cooperation to tackle challenges around peatlands conservation and restoration. During the COP25 uh, UNFCCC in December 2019, the role of peatlands to tackle climate change have been again promoted by ITPC and partners at the Indonesian Pavilion. Other forums for promotion include UN Forum on Forest, UN Climate Week, Asia Pacific Forestry Week, etc. Various knowledge sharing and exchange have also been organized by FTPC in collaboration with other partners, that is C4, UN Environment, FAO, and so on, 
One of the example of is international peatlands work in workshop in Bogor on July 2019 on enhancing evidence-based policy by developing core common outcomes and collaboration for peatland research and monitoring. The workshop brought together more than 35 international and local tropical peatland experts to contribute to the conservation, restoration, and sustainable management of peatlands to improve interdisciplinary research. Another work of ITPC is energizing knowledge and experiences from tropical peatlands. As we know that knowledge and on tropical peatlands has been widely available and is increasing rapidly in recent years. Data and experience in peatland management is also spread everywhere. Thus, a synergy is needed to provide right recommendation for policy decisions. Therefore, the need to gather available information and, risk and develop further capacity to improve science-based actions, not only in Indonesia, but also in other tropical peatland countries. All of this will be useful for input for the development of ITPC knowledge data portal. In terms of conducting knowledge exchange, we have actually been preparing the field visit and knowledge sharing for the technical officials of the ITPC countries in 2020. However, these trips were canceled due to pandemic. Under currently, ITPC with a strong support from C4 is building a common knowledge system as a platform for learning and exchanging information and strengthening knowledge capacity on tropical peatlands. We also improved the website, providing additional function and the feature. The new feature will include expect, expect direct release that can be used as a media for researchers to communicate and exchange knowledge and information and meet pitland experts. There are some ongoing activities and proposed activities that need to be supported. This include ITPC to serve as a repository of pitland projects in tropical pitland countries, coordinated research and capacity development and so on. Before I conclude my presentation, I would like to thanks to all partners that have been working together, ongoing or in the past. I wish within the umbrella of ITPC, we could provide a better understanding of synergies that vary from coordinated action on pit lens among stakeholders, identify major gaps and limitations for safeguarding pit lens, and identify suitable policies policies and action for implementation for conserving, sustainably managing and restoring peatland that involve a multitude of actors. Last but not least, I would like to welcome other countries, particularly with peatlands, international organization, private sector, universities, research institutions, and all other relevant actors to contribute and join the RTPC. Thank you for your time and kind attention. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for that uh, welcome to new partnerships and all partnerships that can work together to contribute to peatlands conservation. We've been able to connect with the Honorable Minister of Environment, Sustainable Development and the Congo Basin from the Republic of Congo happily. So I would like to turn the floor over to the minister to share with us a bit how South-South cooperation has benefited the conservation, restoration, sustainable management of tropical peatlands. Thank you. Minister, the floor is yours. Is 
it seems perhaps we have a bad connection. Um, Zorro, I will turn it back to you. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to moderate this session to date, and I will leave it in your able hands to continue to take us thank forward. You. Thank, you. Okay. thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Doreen. I will continue. Um, wait a minute, please. Ok, eh, muchas gracias entonces al... Al, al doctor Justiando por las por las impresiones Thank que nos much, Dr. Justiando for the um, information that you have uh, shared with us. Thank you the ring for your moderation. Please uh, I welcome uh, Mr. Jose Alvarez Alonso to the floor. He's uh, in charge of uh, biologic diversity in the Ministry of the Environment of Peru. He will share with us the commitments by Peru towards the global uh, peatlands initiative for South-South collaboration that is critical for sustainable management of uh, peatlands. He's a biologist, has different studies in philosophy and others, and has specialized in uh, management of natural resources and sustainable development of the Amazon bridge and resources, and also worked with a collaborative uh, participative collaboration in the Amazon region. He has worked in this region for uh, uh, 29 years. Uh, Dr. Jose Alonso, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sir Babel. Um, thank you, Minister, for being here today and being part of this dialogue. I would like to read the declaration by the Ministry of the Environment uh, for nature-based solutions here in Peru. Being aware of the role of peatlands as a, an important nature-based solution at a global level, at a national level and regional level as well, in facing climate change uh, for conservation of biodiversity and facing uh, different climate uh, challenges. Also, in, in, knowing the importance of uh, the impact on livelihoods of local communities, indigenous people who need to work on better practices uh, and sustainable management of peatlands. We have a common interest on the conservation of the peatlands and we want to promote its sustainable uh, use. We are, uh, as a government, committed as well as scientific centers. We are aware of the different agreements, uh, for example, of the Paris uh, Agreement, Ramsar uh, Agreement, and other initiatives related to peatlands. For example, the Brazzaville Declaration, Global Peatlands Initiative, and others. We are aware that public policy makers, private sector professionals, and local communities need information and solid information, and different tools that are necessary for the design and implementation of the, um, for the management of peatlands. We create the general guidelines for the, management of wetlands. We have already approved this in Peru. We are working towards its conservation, protection, and also revalorization. We have seen the example of, uh, of, the, of Indonesia and also accepted the invitation by the government to be part of the Global Peatlands Initiatives. We would like to then recognize the following. We recognize the importance of Peru to be engaged with the Global Peatlands Initiative as an entity that has a main objective of ensuring that policymakers, professionals, 
and communities have access to information exchange analysis and all the valid tools that are, uh, are important and necessary to design and implement actions towards conservation and sustainable management of tropical peatlands. It is also a space uh, for South-South collaboration that supports information exchange as well as uh, exchange of different practices towards the management of tropical peatlands. We have, it includes different collaborations at an international level with different stakeholders. It has also the objective of disseminating local knowledge about tropical peatlands for sustainable development. It also wants, it also seeks to become uh, the focus f uh, of in information exchange for uh, policy makers. The Republic of Indonesia has invited, uh, invited Peru to work on the establishment of a document for the second part of 2021 to strengthen national entities and institutions, for example, the Research Institute for the, Amaz the Peruvian Amazon region, and also the glacial and highlands nature center to be part of this also to invite different entities from the private sector to be part of the ITPC and also thanking uh, um, GPI in uh, actions and activities um, promoting the sustainable development and revalorization of peatlands uh, as nature-based solution to face climate change and other global challenges. That's what we are doing in Peru. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jose. Thank you very much, Jose, for enabling this historic moment for all for of us in this meeting. We all appreciate Peru's commitment and leadership to promote the conservation, restoration, and sustainable management of peatlands in order to come to fight climate change together with the other partner countries. Now we have the privilege of having Diana Kopansky, coordinator of the Global Peatlands Initiative from the UNEP to summarize the discussions of the distinguished ministers and the exchanges that have happened during this high level segment of the fourth meeting of the partners of the Global Pitlands Initiative hosted by Peru. Ms. Kopansky is an expert in landscapes and biodiversity, delivering a suite of partnerships and programs on ecosystem management and climate change. Diana has worked in Africa for the past 21 years on a range of issues within the emergency, humanitarian, and development fields. For UNEP, she works globally and led teams to develop and implement projects such as the UN RED program, delivering as one UN and the MDGF. As part of UNEP's executive office, she developed UN system-wide strategies, policies to strengthen the regional offices and enable the inclusion of environment uh, of the environment as pillar in the UN development system frameworks. She led the environmental portfolio for UN FAO's Regional Emergency Office for Africa and provided direct technical support to governments in over 40 countries to integrate environmental issues into national development plans and poverty reduction strategies, or UNDP. Prior to moving to Africa, Diana prepared Canada's State of Environment and Illness Cost of Air Pollution Reports. Diana, the floor is yours. Welcome. Go ahead, please. Thank you so much, Azarabel uh, Babel. I just wanted to let you know that we have the Minister of Environment 
from the Republic of Congo who has now successfully connected. So perhaps we can give the floor to uh, the Minister from Environment and then I'm ready to go. Thank you so much. Of course. Minister, you have the floor. You are welcome, please. Bonjour, bonjour, je suis une dame. <laughs> bonjour. Je vous prie déjà de m'excuser hein, pour ce retard, mais malheureusement, j'ai eu euh, des grandes contraintes. Pour tout vous dire, on a eu un conseil. I apologize for being late. We just finished the Ministry Council. And I had to participate, so I apologize. And thank you for letting me speak. Dear colleagues from the Ministry of the Environment of Peru, Prime Minister of the Environment of the Republic of Congo, Minister of the Environment of Indonesia, dear experts, dear guests, the importance of peatlands doesn't have to be demonstrated because they contributed to reduce the amount of carbon, of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and that's why the international community wishes to invest in the protection of sustainable management of these ecosystems, which are so fragile. According to the provisions from the Paris Agreement, so the temperature of the planet doesn't increase in two degrees centigrade. According to the researchers from the Lynx University and the results from the Brassfield project, peatlands from the Bethel Lake and Tumba Lake in the Republic of Congo and the Democratic Republic of Congo are the peatlands that uh, have existed for more than 17,000 years, which are the most representative uh, ones in the world, and they represent twice the size of Belgium. So these numbers are impressive. And they have 31,000 tons of carbon, which is equivalent of 20 years of uh, greenhouse effect uh, gas emissions from the United States. So these uh, carbon stocks is a group of carbon which is in the 200 uh, million, sorry, 200,000 hectares. Now peatlands have 160, uh, 1,650 meters squared with a 14% increase. Likewise, carbon is stored in these uh, peatlands and there is more than 21,000. Now, some information that we have gathered in this research will be published in COP26 at Glasgow. Peatlands in the Congo Basin are part of a particular ecosystem because they are full of flora and fauna species, including endemic species, endangered species, which only exist in the Congo Basin. However, other researches have been done in order to improve the knowledge of biodiversity of the ecosystem. These are carb important carbon stocks that represent a great interest for uh, climate change mitigation. And this is uh, a must in order to achieve the GDPs related to the, the global objectives and the Paris Agreement. As you know, the 
Republic of Congo has organized uh, in Braceville together with the Re Democratic Republic of Congo, a meeting on the Global Peatlands Initiative. Oh, as a result of that meeting, the Republic of Congo, Indonesia, and the Democratic Republic of Congo signed the Brazzaville Declaration for Sustainable Management of Peatlands, which summarizes in 11 items. We had the honor to have the, my great friend, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Sustainable Development, who came to visit us with a delegation of 50 people from Indonesia. I would like to greet her now. This declaration is a roadmap for the actions that need to be taken in the short, mid, and long term in the framework of sustainable management of peatlands. The search for funding in order to develop ecosystems related related ecosystems and the sustainable development of uh, the implicated area. In 2018, when we did this work in Indonesia, the Republic of, of Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Indonesia signed in Bali an agreement for sustainable, manage peatland, sustainable management of peatlands. Here we should highlight the role of the bull funds because there was a change of action where uh, peatlands are included. The peatlands from the Congo Basin. There was a meeting in the framework of the COP meeting in Marrakesh. And a financial instrument was presented there, including the countries from the Congo Basin. This is one of the institutions from the African Union. And this initiative was approved by the uh, presidents of Africa in the, this uh, summit that was done in Marrakesh but also in Brazzaville, in the presence of your majesty, the king of uh, Morocco. And just to remind you of this fund, it, its goal is to have funds in order to finance projects, programs and investment plans to fight against climate change. in order to mitigate, adapt, and reinforce uh, capabilities and develop technologies. Thanks to the financing uh, dedicated to climate, public-private associations, the participation of civil society and local communities. Country members of these, uh, con of these uh, forum are the members of this climate commission of the Congo Basin, uh, plus Morocco. Thanks to this, there was a series of studies and 254 projects were developed thanks to this, including national contributions from the different countries as well as an investment plan that includes approximately a billion dollars. So this is already ready. We are just in the stage of procurement. Dear ministers, dear experts, Matt, ladies and gentlemen, the message that I want to send just to finish is the following. In 
if we conserve or conserving peatlands and protecting them uh, rich countries need to respect the Paris Agreement and this is essential for peatlands which keep on absorbing our carbon we need to make to take measures for conservation restoration and sustainable banishment of peatlands from the Congo Basin and from everywhere in the world in order to protect biodiversity, water, and climate. We hope Peru, whose initiative we salute, we congratulate, we thank their initiative because it's a solution, a nature-based solution and the Democratic Republic of Congo wants to join this government and sign this agreement protocol. I'm talking on behalf of the Climate Commission of the Congo Basin. I'm the coordinator, and that's why you see that my speech has a political technical cut. Peru has great experience in tropical peatland management and experience exchange with this country as well as with Indonesia constitutes an opportunity for the Republic of Congo as well as the other countries from the Congo Basin, especially the Democratic Republic of Congo. Cooperation at a political and scientific level levels will allow us to fight against global warming. Thank you. Thanks to uh, tropical peatland sustainable management. So thank you once again for allowing me to speak today. I would just like to remind you the urgency to preserve these ecosystems which are fragile because scientists tell has told us so in their last conclusions, in their final conclusions, the these um, the peatlands that are in the Repo Democratic Republic of Congo are irrigated by the pluviometry of uh, forest of trees. So we needed to give local populations uh, economic alternatives uh, to live. So thank you very much for your attention. Señora Ministra Arlet Sudán Nanut por sus palabras. Eh, estamos muy agradecidos por ello. Y ahora voy a volver con la señora Diana Kopansky, quien va a hacer una eh, eh, presentación. We'll be back with uh, Mrs. Diana Kopansky, that is going to summarize the presentations. Diana Kopansky, please, you have the floor. Thank you, everyone. And Thank you so much for all the incredible interventions. Um, it's really an honor to be here with our distinguished ministers and our guests to catch up on the progress that each country is making toward the conservation, restoration, and sustainable management of peatlands. With the ongoing COVID pandemic, I'm really grateful that we're all able to be here together virtually for this ministerial segment of the fourth Global Peatlands Initiative Partner Meeting. And on behalf of the United Nations Environment Program, I honestly have the honor to lead the Global Peatlands Initiative. It's been such a pleasure. I want to share with you a few of the achievements that we've uh, shared together, as well as some of the upcoming exciting work that we have planned. Success for the climate, planet, and people on a global scale requires global action. And the Global Peatlands Initiative has been working for results and impact built on experience and approaches from science to policy and innovation to financing. Four of our tropical peatland country partners that you've heard from and 43 international organizations have been really working hard to improve the conservation, restoration and sustainable management of peatlands through facilitated south-south and triangular collaboration. 
and by forging new and innovative partnerships and taking joint action for scale and speed. The GPI was launched at the UNFCCC COP in Marrakesh at the end of 2016 and fully came to life when Indonesia co-hosted the meeting of the Global Peatland Initiative Partners in May 2017. This brought together Indonesia, the Republic of Congo, DR Congo, and Peru governments with global and national and local experts and stakeholders, including youth to commit to the work of peatlands together. It culminated with the dedicated Global Peatlands Landscape Forum and called Peatlands Matter with more than 500 people coming together to elevate peatlands to the global agenda. The event drew on experiences from Indonesia and across the world and really helped us set the level of ambition for the Global Peatlands Initiative commitment and leadership. In March 2018, we were in the Republic of Congo when DR Congo and Republic of Congo jointly hosted the third meeting of the partners of the GPI. We interacted with local communities, scientists and experts and learned from each other. And the Indonesian minister shared her experience and efforts that the country was making to cope with climate change as well as managing peatlands. And Her Excellency appealed to the Congolese ministers and the Republic of Congo prime minister to really learn from Indonesia's developmental challenges and peatlands management experience. And this culminated in the Brazzaville Declaration. As a further step, we were in Indonesia in 2018 for a high level South-South exchange. And we spent a working week together to deepen the sharing of knowledge and management. We learned about fire management. We learned about community forestry practices. And we also joined hands to establish the International Tropical Peatlands Center. Further deepening their commitment the ministers of the Republic of Congo and Indonesia both signed a memorandum of understanding to continue the South-South Peatlands Knowledge Exchange. And the South-South and Triangular Collaboration Approach has enabled the Global Peatlands Initiative to really facilitate peer-to-peer -peer exchange of best practice and helping us to scale up and improve management actions for healthy peatlands. By working in this way, we can help countries make well-informed decisions and develop management and policy options that minimize impacts on people and the environment and avoid dangerous social and climatic tipping points linked to peatland loss and degradation. The Global Peatlands Initiative work was recognized by UNEP in their South-South Cooperation in Action Stories of Success and in early 2019 and then Further in 2020, the UN system wide named the Global Peatlands Initiative and the work that we've been doing as a South South and Triangular Cooperation best practice for the achievement of SDG 15 Life on Land. Despite the challenges faced by COVID, Peru, the DRC, the Republic of Congo, and Indonesia continue to play a leadership role in influential and global policymaking fora built on scientific research and expertise, our diverse partners have been raising the importance of peatlands in a number of global fora, including during the UNFCCC COPs. And this year we've been coordinating a whole host of peatlands event concepts for a dedicated peatlands pavilion, which we hope to be able to pull off at the COP in Glasgow. Really let's hope that we're able to come together in the physical and virtual space designed there. And as we heard from the Minister of Environment from Indonesia, they worked together hard to be able to influence some of the most important global environmental policy making for us. And in 2019, we saw Indonesia together with the United States of America and the European Union representatives join forces to negotiate a dedicated resolution on the conservation and sustainable management of peatlands at the fourth United Nations Environment Assembly. This resolution is a commitment by all of the member states in the world to give a greater emphasis to the conservation, sustainable management and restoration of peatlands worldwide and to support the sustainable practice of peatlands management. 
And here we are, this meeting today, hosted by the Excellence, His Excellency, the, the Minister of Environment from Peru. It's just another important milestone on our pathway. We're really happy to be together to celebrate Peru's commitment to join the International Tropical Peatland Center and congratulate per Peru and the partners on the work that they're embarking on to integrate peatlands into critical policies and plans, including into their NDC. We were originally supposed to meet in 2020, but with the ongoing COVID pandemic, the meeting had to be postponed. Today, we are honestly grateful to have all four ministers and their representatives together to exchange at this high level segment. And we hope to have a technical segment held later on this year. And then finally, to be able to be back together face to face in Peru uh, if the situation will allow it next year. Today, our honorable ministers have shared their work, taking account the importance of peatlands to their countries and for their people. Uh, His Excellency Minister of Environment from Peru shared how peatlands can be an ecosystem where multilateral uh, environmental agreements, many multilateral environmental agreements can be advanced together. And uh, His Excellency stressed that international collaboration is essential to protect peatlands and achieve global biodiversity and climate change targets. His Excellency also shared a number of important commitments made by the country, including the Supreme Decree, with an emphasis of the importance of multi sectoral and decentralized management of wetlands. And also building off and learning from the indigenous communities about the management of natural resources found in peatlands. Her Excellency Minister Siti Nirabaya, Minister of Environment and Forestry from Indonesia, shared with us the incredible diverse complex and um, just far reaching work that's been done by Indonesia to restore their peatlands sharing their experience of including peatlands in their NDC and pushing further to advance uh, data and information to aim at being carbon neutral. Um, Her, Excellency Sabat, uh, Her Excellency emphasized Indonesia's works to integrate policies and regulations under collaborative frameworks of ministries across many ministries for peatlands with some great examples of work undertaken by the dedicated Peatlands Restoration Agency. Her Excellency emphasized the need to continue to exchange and continue to share best practices across tropical peatland countries and with and through the International Tropical Peatland Center and the Global Peatlands Initiative. The representative from the Democratic Republic of Congo shared with us the importance of taking peatlands into account in climate change adaptation and mitigation policies, both at the national and international levels. And DRC shared the need to support and develop policies that take in at the heart of the, uh, their policies, sustainable livelihoods without peatlands drainage. The representative from the vice prime minister's office emphasized the need for economic valuation of peatlands upon which they would like to base their peatland strategies and plans and also inform their decisions toward the conservation and sustainable management of peatlands. And finally, Her Excellency, the Minister of Environment, Sustainable Development and the Congo Basin from the Republic of Congo kindly shared with us powerful message on the importance of peatlands in the Congo Basin sharing the importance of this important, significant global treasure and the spirit of collaboration and working together through transboundary collaboration with important international support. Her Excellency also called for more adequate financial resources to support the efforts in her country, as well as across the region for the preservation of peatlands for the benefits of climate, people and the world. Peatlands we know cover only 3% of the global land surface area, yet they hold 30% of the world's soil carbon. Degradation through conservation and drainage has affected nearly 15% of all peatlands globally. And these degraded peatlands cover just 0.4% of the global land area, but they contribute as much as five to six 
percent of global human caused greenhouse gas emissions annually. There are large knowledge gaps and information gaps that the Global Peatlands Initiative partners are really working hard to fill. For example, we still don't know where all peatlands are or fully understand how they're changing. And the Global Peatlands Initiative partners are working together to improve our tools and approaches for peatlands monitoring and mapping, drawing on expertise from around the world with FAO, C4 and the Greifswald-Meyer Center and more who are advancing this work and building capacities across the world as a foundation for increased ambition towards global agreements to support the implementation of the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration and to help the Global Peatlands Initiative to establish the state of the world's peatlands in our upcoming Global Peatlands Assessment. A new network of peatlands researchers has recently joined together as part of the Global Peatlands Initiative Research Working Group with more than 150 members across the world helping to build capacities and share and connect up through interdisciplinary research, uh, helping to adv advance and harmonize peatlands research appro approaches across regions. UNEP is now starting to coordinate efforts to establish the state of the world's peatlands through a global peatlands assessment. assessment. The global peatlands assessment will be organized by regions and biomes. It will include best practice case studies and an interactive map. And it will be available in the next two years and in three languages. Nature and our climate is in crisis. The benefits of intact peatlands far outweigh their importance for fuel and food security. The land that peatlands fall on is a relatively small sacrifice to pay for the immense benefits that they provide. And as we move away from the use of coal for fuel, we also need to move away from polluting and damaging agricultural practices that cause further and avoidable greenhouse gas emissions. We need to work together to understand pathways and incentives for transitioning business models away from environmentally degrading actions toward more holistic solutions. We deeply appreciate the efforts to tackle climate change and nature emergency will only be successful if we're able to work together and work at scale and with pace. Rest assured that the United Nations Environment Program and the Global Peatlands Initiative partners are here to support you. Together, we look forward to continue to move the needle in the right direction for nature, for climate, and for our climate future and our children's future to invest in healthy peatlands now and take urgent action to conserve, restore, and sustainably manage those peatlands that have already been affected by land use disturbances and climate change. Thank you so much. Um, you're all a part of the solution. We're excited to be here to take you on this journey together for peatlands, for climate, for people, and our planet. Thanks very much. Okay. Muchas. Muchas gracias eh, por el excelente resumen. Thank you very much for the excellent summary and inspiring work that the Global Peatlands Initiative is doing to address the climate, nature, and pollution crisis, Diana. It is my honor now to call upon Luis Elena Guinan Quintero, Vice Minister of Strategic Development of Natural Resources from the Ministry of Environment of Peru to conclude this productive session and share the closing remarks. Luisa has extensive experience in environmental planning and policies such as biodiversity, climate change, and water resources, as well as in the direction and management of projects related to sustainable development and environmental management in the Andean subregion. I'm talking about Peru, Venezuela, Bolivia, Ecuador, and Colombia, as well as um, institutional development and attraction of financial resources, project development and implementation, and international negotiation negotiations in trade environment and sustainable development, among other topics of relevance for natural resource management. Vice Minister, welcome. The floor is yours. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Thank you very much, Sir Babel, for this opportunity and thank you everyone. Distinguished Excellence, Your Excellencies, Institute Uraya, Prime Minister of the Environment of Indonesia, Ms. 
y Masayda Masubi, Vice Minister of the Environment and Sustainable Development of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Ms. Arlette Sudan, no, no, Minister of the Environment and Sustainable Development of the Congo Basin of the Republic of Congo, Honorable Partners from the Global Peeland Initiative, and dear guests, I would like to speak in order to close this important event which has gathered us all today. This virtual dialogue has allowed us to discuss uh, some uh, research and progress and challenges that we sh all share in this global peatlands initiative for sustainable management of tropical peatlands the peruvian government has announced important milestones for this increasing process for care to care for peelants and we hope that with the cooperation organizations and the experience of national international experts uh, we can satisfactorily achieve them peru promotes the recognition and implementation of nature-based solutions to mitigate the effects of climate change as well as other global challenges through the conservation and importance of strategic ecosystems such as the peatlands. We are committed to lead our country to comply with our international commitments in such topics. The inclusion of peatlands as NTC it shows the importance of the role of the ecosystemic services they provide and the need to continue in researching peelings in the framework of our commitment to promote the sustainable development and the reduction, the global reduction of the green, uh, greenhouse gases. Our global framework, as well as our explicit agreements to adhere to the ref to the benchmark of the International Center of Tropical Peatlands will reinforce the joint work between the Peruvian government, its peers worldwide, meaning Indonesia, the Republic Democratic, the Democratic Republic of Congo and the Republic of Congo, and the international cooperation institutions towards the joint search for nature-based solutions in order to face climate change and foster sustainable development and inclusive development. Likewise, I would like to commit you all from anywhere you are in order to promote a more sustainable development of tropical peatlands, promoting better practices, creating, building capacities, integrating knowledge between uh, men, women, and people in general for the conservation, restoration, and sus sustainable management and importance of tropical peatlands. Finally, I would like to especially uh, thank the different institutions that have made this event possible. Uh, UNEP, C4, and all of you specialists and technicians present today in this important session. Thank you very much for your attention. Very well then, thank you very much for your powerful statement, Your Excellency, and thank you to all our distinguished ministers and speakers for sharing your valuable thoughts and experiences as leaders for the conservation, restoration, and sustainable management of peatlands globally. Today, we've learned a lot and we deeply appreciate how incredibly important peatlands are. I am, we are grateful to know that peatlands provide extraordinary ecosystem and life supporting services and offer an incredible opportunity to, for, to accelerate um, emissions reductions, protecting irrecoverable carbon sinks, and providing 
um, precious refugees for rare and endangered species. Although we still identify some knowledge gaps, what is clear is that peatlands matter for the, for the climate, people, and the planet. Peatlands are a great nature-based solution and are the key to tackle the three planetary crises of climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution. We can do it, but only if, if we work together. We need more action and more cooperation. We're not alone. There is vast knowledge and expertise surrounding best practices for ecosystem conservation and restoration that we can draw on. Let's, let us share our experiences and grow together for the protection of our tropical peatlands. Thank you very much for the participation of the distinguished leaders that join us today. Thanks to all of our speakers, guests, and everybody who's watching. Thank you as well to the organizers, the Ministry of the Environment of Peru, the UN Environment Program, the Global Peatlands Initiative, the International Tropical Peatland Center, and the the International Center for Forest Research for bringing us together today. Have a great day. Thank you very much. If I can ask everyone that is still um, on the line, ministers of environment and their technical teams, if we can put a photo, we can get a family photo, the Global Peatlands Initiative family photo, as we usually do as a tradition, please feel free to turn on your cameras so that we can get uh, this photo. There are many exciting and important questions that have been asked in the chat and as the Global Peatlands Initiative team, we'll collect those so that we can get back to those participants for, um, uh, for their responses and answers. And we'll also share those with you. So if there are any other people that would like to, the whole team, please, uh, that is here with us today, turn on your cameras, please. Thank you so much. Yoli, I don't see you as well as Julie. And yeah, we take a few family photos. <laughs> Thanks so much. And we'll take those photos now. Coral, thank you so much. Minister Sudananu, great to see you. And Minister Ibu Siti, thank you so much. Madame Sylvie, thank you so much. Gracias, Jose, thank you. And Minister Luisa, Vice Minister Luisa, a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, thank you so much. For anyone that would like to stay on for an informal chat between the delegates, please do feel free to stay on. Otherwise, my uh, sincere appreciation to everyone that made time and also shared your knowledge, as well as the commitment that we have together. Uh, we've got some exciting things coming up as well with at the COP in Glasgow and uh, hope to see you there either in person or also virtually.